Hello and welcome. I'm Ari Lax, and this week uh, I'm going to bring you a little bit with a deck that it's been around for a while, uh, but recently it's just had enough success that I feel like I should be giving it a go, and that is Merfolk. Um, this is a deck I've really just hated in the past, but it's just won so much between it won Grand Prix LA earlier this year, or last year, I guess by now. Uh, so about six months ago, um, and most recently, Jonathan Zagzek, uh, Nikachu, is, he just streams this deck a ton, um, finished in the finals at Grand Prix Vancouver with it, and it, it's had a few of the top eights along the way, and it's just worth taking another look at. Um, so to break down what's going on here, you are a aggressive deck, basically kind of all-out aggro, um, I think I listed this in the bulky aggro section of things um, in my full modern breakdown because you are trying to go over the top in terms of size uh, with your large amount of lords and the master of the waves as a huge effect. So in terms of that, so we've got, you know, all these heavy hitters. We have our random value creatures. You'll notice I have Mutavolt here. It's a creature that both produces mana and attacks, really. Um, the 2-2 two -two body is often 3 or 4 damage in this deck with the number of Merfolk you have. Uh, and then Silver Girl Adept obviously just filtering through additional cards is good times. You have a significant amount of interaction, which kind of starts putting you down the same realm as like Death and Taxes and Legacy. Um, especially because a lot of this interaction is creature-based. I think that was one of the things that uh, Nikachu... This list specifically is the list that he had posted after the Grand Prix for... Uh, SCG Indie is his updated list. Um, I think that one of the big things that was good about the list that he played is that he pushed towards a lot more of this interactive creature style play, which lets you advance your battlefield, get clocks in, and also interact with your opponent. Um, which, again, to comparison to Death and Taxes and Legacy, you know that is really the strength of that deck, and I think that uh, hammering on that axis is really where this deck is going to succeed. You're going to fail when you start having hands that are like Spell Pierce, Spreading Seas, Dismember, One Lord. Like, that's just not a hand. And this deck, as is, only has uh, seven interactive spells that aren't creatures, which is great. So, going through them, one Tidebinder randomly catches some stuff. Not as much as it used to because Death Shadow is really popular. Um, but previously, it would take out, you know, Karmagoyf was a much bigger part of the metagame. Um... I think there used to be, you know, hitting Glistener Elf was a thing, Noble Hierarch. There used to be a little bit more uh, creature combo, so you'd take out birds and things like that. I remember when this card was first popularized, I think Birthing Pod was still legal. Uh, Curse Catcher, not only is it a way to interact with combo, but it's your cheapest threat. Uh, curving out with Curse Catcher is often just, like, really good, uh, really aggressive starts. Harbinger of the Tides was a pretty big ad for the deck when it came out in Magic Origins. Just a way to, well, I mean, at the time, again, it was fighting in fact a little more, but now it's going to be fighting Death Shadow. Just the decks that are trying to aggressively race you with singular creatures are uh, really broken up when they get hit by this card. Uh, and then Vendillion Click, I think, was a big add on Yukichi's part. Just more interaction for the combo matchups uh, that actually adds power to the battlefield, which I think is something this deck was lacking. So I'm excited to see how that goes. In terms of spells that interact, Dismember is just the best removal you have. Um, Vapor Snag is the other option, but it's not, you know, hard removal. And then Spreading Seas, uh, not only does it replace itself, not only does it disrupt mana reasonably well, because people tend to have, people make a lot of mistakes playing around this card. I think that's where removal gets a lot of edge, is how Spreading Seas interacts against fetch dual mana bases, but the island effect, uh, lives up the island walk on your lords, so your creatures are usually unblockable. And then in terms of mana... Uh, you're actually pretty light on lands. I guess there's 24, technically 24 mana sources in the deck if you count Mutavolt. Um, but with Mutavolt attacking everything, it plays out pretty pretty spell-heavy. Um, Aether Vile is an interesting card in this deck. It's not like the Legacy list with like Days and Wasteland where you're ending up in these low land count situations where it's really cranking out value. Um... You're trying to use it to abuse the fact that you can be more land light, -like, more threat dense. And there's actually kind of a liability to drawing multiple Aether Vials in this deck. Uh, just because it's, you know, the second one's not really a card. 
And that's often a thing that you can exploit when you're playing against this deck, is if you see multiple Aether Vials or ne expect them to draw multiple Aether Vials, um, you'll actually see this deck sideboarding down or out on Aether Vials and grinding matchups as a result. Moving the sideboard, it's heavy on counter magic. Um, Tide Manders, additional answers. Relics, uh, less graveyard hate because of dredge shipping away a little bit. Uh, seize claims to fight various mana bases, including things like Tron. Uh, and you'll notice there's no affinity to hate. Uh, even if you max out on that, the matchup's not... It's, it's fine, but not great. So this is kind of just a... There's not a lot of affinity. May as well sacrifice the matchup. Though, uh, Jonathan did beat John Stern in the top eight of that Grand Prix, so there's always a chance. So yeah, this is uh, Merfolk. There's a lot of just doing the same thing. Um, I think we'll see a little more of how things play out. Uh, it's hard to talk through a lot of the math and stuff. Uh, without actually being in game. So we'll take a look at that as things progress.